Hello friends, hola, que pasa? It is your buddy Keith and I am here live in the control room at Essex Recording Studios just outside London in England. Here in the control room showing you a very rare ESP guitar. If you're new to the channel, click like, smash subscribe, come join our circle of friends. You're going to see the rarest of the rare, the coolest of the cool, up close as if you're holding it in your very own hands. Yes. So, a little studio news. Guys, we just had a huge release, King of the Dead. Go on Spotify, go on YouTube, check it out. They've got a lyric video with some really cool artwork from horror artist Sam Mail. But uh, it's, the song's called Control. King of the Dead is the band. Control is the song. And uh, it's got members from Grim Reaper, from Aaron Buchanan and the Cult Classics, who we've recorded, Bootyard Bandits, who we've recorded. It's a really cool band, and uh, I hope you like them. Back to this. This guitar, guys. When is the last time you saw like a seafoam kind of mint ESP guitar? Um, this is just radical. This is called the Mirage. Not just Mirage, but the Mirage. The Mirage Deluxe. Nowadays, you see the M2, M1. Well, that stems from Mirage. That's what the M comes from. And this is an early model. This is about an 89, 89.90. It has the early ESP Sinclair Floyd style tremolo. These things are really, really cool. One of the reasons they're sought after is because of this. Check it out. You just pop it in. You don't have to spend years of your life screwing it in and also scratching your paint when you're twirling and twirling and twirling and wondering when is this tremolo bar going to come out and then uh, it comes out and scratches the top surface of your guitar no bueno all right i love this guitar i saw the paint job and i said i have to have this funny thing about esp uh, esp is the usa department those guys are heavily in charge of the marketing and direction of how the company behaves globally and they definitely have been paying attention to this channel and they've definitely been paying attention to my reverb shop because i've got the largest collection of esps in europe and certainly the largest esp store i'm going to do a video on exactly why you don't see actual ESPs in guitar shops. I'm going to give you the whole lowdown on that because boy did I get an education when I became a dealer and I quickly bailed from that situation. It was a disaster. But uh, yeah, there's a reason why. And uh, those guys at ESP USA, who are really a marketing company, they've definitely been paying attention to this channel because guess what they brought back ever since we blew up huge? They've been bringing back all these vintage models, all of these. They've got like the 89 series they're doing with the LTDs. That's because they've been seeing how much money these have been going for on my shop. Guaranteed, 100% influenced that decision. And there's a good reason for that because these guitars are built awesome. And people, new guitarists, are slowly discovering these earlier models and the value's going up because parts like these Sinclairs are getting harder to find, especially in this condition. Um, you know, and there's an old saying, they, they don't build them like they used to. And the amount of time, money, and materials that went into building guitars back then, uh, you know, companies today, labor costs are way more. Materials costs are way more. So shortcuts are way more. Um, and when you can buy something like this, with this color, with these specs that just stands out so well for a fraction, a fraction of what something new with that on the headstock costs. I mean, my God, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but recently eBay and Reverb have been flooded with ESPs from Japan and the prices on them are nuts. Like brand new guitars starting at like. 5,000 euros, 6,000, you know, the prices are going through the roof on these. And, and frankly, I would take one of these 30-year-old models any day of the week 
over one of these new ones at those price points. So looking at the back, we've got the old style neck plate. There you can see the serial number. It's 50190, which places it right, like I said, right around 8990 based on the ones that I've had. Just an estimation. If it's newer than that, not much more. You know, we have, uh, I think we've got 60 serial numbers that are uh, 93, 9293. Also cool, check out the old ESP style tuners. Very rad. And beautiful, absolutely beautiful maple neck. Let's go down this nice and slowly. The condition on this is incredible. Like you can tell, it's been babied. It's got a few little dings on edges, but like nothing really to speak of with buckle rash. You know, there's one little ding over here. Um, it's remarkably clean. Got the old style coffin. I call it the coffin panel on the back here. And, you know, this is essentially the model that Kirk Hammett chose to use as his base foundation for his signature. Now, if we go back to the, the headstock here, you can see the ESP logo with that the silver, classic silver metallic with the gold outline. The E, that middle dash in the E is a speaker cone. A lot of people don't realize that. The Mirage. And then on here, there's a little bit of, a little, little bit of uh, wear around the edges, you know, but nothing. Nothing too crazy. Truss rod cover still there. Beautiful thing about these is you don't have to do loads of work on the truss rod. And that's why the truss rod covers are always there. Be wary when you see those covers missing, guys. Also, check out the rosewood on this. Beautiful. And the frets, I can tell you how we know this thing has barely been played. Because look at the fret condition. I'm going to just move these strings over. There we go. I mean, there's like nowhere. Look at that. It's crazy. Somebody took great care of this guitar, had it for all these years, three decades, and like didn't play it. I mean, you can tell too because like the white letters, the ESP font, see that? Perfectly intact. This these usually have loads of rust and corrosion if they've been heavily played. But this just has normal surface oxidization, little parts. I mean, the font, perfectly legible there. The ESP logo, perfectly legible. This is great, guys. I mean, look at the screws. You don't have any, you know, no real corrosion, the pole pieces. This is as clean as you can expect to find one of these. awesome guys well if you want to record with this beast by all means book some time and come rock out with us we've got really cool amps cabs preamps compressors eqs man i'll tell you one thing that is an awesome eq go ahead and google yourself a chandler curve bender and see how much those cost they're freaking awesome some of our colorful very cool cabs just a fraction of them. But yeah, book some time. We will make some music, guys. If you want to buy this, I am going to put it up in the shop on Reverb.com and on our website, EssexRecordingStudios.com. This thing, guys, this is going to sell fast. It's the color. The color, the condition, seafoam green uh, ESPs, you just don't see them. And this is what ESP is starting to copy now and bring back now with their 89 series so you know you could spend a grand or so on on one of those reissues built in indonesia i don't know if they're built in korea i think they're indonesia now you know or you can get the real deal that they're trying to copy from back in the day uh right here guys and it's interesting to see because my channel definitely is influencing these companies like for instance I did a video on the very first Jackson ever made. Jackson number one, that is. 
And guess what? After doing the video, after releasing it and having everybody go see it, everybody go crazy about it on the forums, Mike Shannon goes and does a copy of it. All these years later, only after I do the video of it. That's cool. That's fine. That's part of the reason why I did the video is so that people would understand how cool and crazy it is. And given that it's locked away in Switzerland, you know, there's, there's a handful of people that are ever going to see it. So I love doing these videos. I don't mind at all if, if the marketing companies or the manufacturers uh, want to copy what it is that we do and what we're about here at the studio. By all means, go for it. But I will be doing a video about these guys. Not the Japanese company, which is the real company, but ESP USA, who pretends, often pretends to be ESP. Whole story there. Cool. I gotta go, because I've got way more cool guitars hiding out in storage that I want to show you. This one's been hiding for a few months, and I forgot about it, and I opened up the case, and it was like, it's like the scene from Pulp Fiction, where they've got the, the briefcase, and it just glows when you open it. It's like, oh yeah, this thing. Right on. Cool. All right. Uh, aside from that, guys, I am Audi 5000. Got any questions? Hit me up on the socials at Essex Recording Studios, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Cool. Catch you all later.